friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India let us observe fecal emulsification of this very hard cataract by this time the main incision has been made this is a side port on the left side of the main incision and in this case I did only one side port now I'm going to stain the anterior capsule of this cataract with tripan blue dye. We can see the pupil has not dilated well in this case. Size of this pupil is about 4.5 millimeter. I used adrenaline to see if the pupil dilates little more, but it didn't dilate much. And we can assume that as soon as we will start chopping this nucleus the people will become smaller in size so I have planned to use a people expansion device in this case and the chamber has been underfilled some visco has been injected behind the iris and now I'm going to apply this hexagonal people expansion device. It has been invented by Dr. Suvin Bhattacharji of Kolkata, India. It's a beautiful device, very thin. It has got notches and flanges. I tuck the flanges with the tabs. I hold the middle tab and tuck the leading flange at on go provided the device goes into the anterior chamber completely and through the main incision itself I can tuck the flange on the left side near the main incision the flange which is centered at around one o'clock and through the left side port with the left hand I can tuck the other flange which is centered at 10 o'clock and now capsulorexis is to be done I have incised and raised capsular tag with a needle and now I am going to use this uterator forceps hold the capsular tag go along the margin of the hexagonal people it has been made hexagonal by the hexagonal people expansion device and an adequate size to rexis has been done in hard cataracts we should aim for uh, rexis between 5 and 6 millimeter it should be more than 5 millimeter at least 5.5 millimeter Rexis is necessary to manage the nucleus safely in hard cataracts. And now, after injecting visco, the tip of the feco needle is to be introduced. See the exposure of the tip. I'm going to rotate the sleeve and expose the tip little more so that I can deliver more ultrasonic energy into the substance of the nucleus and watch submarine chop for this hard cataract bevel is off by the chopper the nucleus is pushed little down and the tip of the phaco needle is buried into the substance of the nucleus just in front of the main incision it goes through the nucleus near the opposite equator as it crosses the center and reaches midpoint between the center and the opposite equator the chopper is used to divide the nucleus it has been rotated 180 degree one heminucleus is held and then the chopper is used to divide the two heminuclei 
completely to separate the two heminuclei completely and now each heminucleus is being divided into three fragments this is one and this larger fragment is again divided and thus the heminucleus gets divided into three pieces and now I'm going to emulsify these two pieces and then the other piece so on heminucleus has been emulsified completely before dividing the other heminucleus in this particular case usually I divide the whole nucleus into fragments and then start emulsification but in this case I have divided I have emulsified one heminucleus completely and now I am dividing the other heminucleus into three fragments and the machine being used is Faro's posterior combined Faro's but this surgery is very much possible with Oatly Catarex 3 or even Oatly AC and see the main wound you will never get wound burn with Oatly because the FECO needle the shaft of the FECO needle is thinner narrower and there is lot of BSS around the shaft of the FECO needle and see the what I'm going to do in this case I have emulsified five fragments and now I came out I want to inject some visco and then partially emulsify the last piece in this case since there is no epinuclear cushion no epinuclear substance covering the posterior capsule I'm going to use an intraocular lens to protect the posterior capsule so before emulsifying this last nuclear fragment I'm going to apply I'm going to implant the intraocular lens and when there is BHEX enlarge the main wound little bit so that you can deliver the nucleus in the bag and the haptic stone place on the flanges of the BHEX which is above the iris and now the posterior capsule is nicely protected now I'm going to decrease the exposure of the tip of the FECO needle and going to emulsify this fragment and this time I'm 100% sure that the posterior capsule is nicely protected so this is a very a nice way of using protecting posterior capsule when there is very little cortex or no epinucleus we can implant the intraocular lens before emulsification of the last nuclear fragment and if the last nuclear fragment is a big piece we can emulsify the last piece partially and now I'm going to remove the cortex with intraocular lens in the bag it is not at all difficult to remove the cortex with CTR it may be difficult but with intraocular lens in the bag it is not at all difficult to remove the cortex by Simco or by manual irrigation aspiration or coaxial irrigation aspiration 
this case I have only one side port and so I used a Simco cannula and now the cortex is removed and now I have to remove the BHEX people expansion device inject visco again use the BHEX forceps and hold the flange which is above the iris and at 3 o'clock at this time I'm checking whether the eye wheel is in the bag or not yes it is in the capsular bag And now I'm going to use the BHEX forceps, hold the flange at 3 o'clock, pull it centrally, come off and go to the periphery and all the flanges get untucked. And the VHEX people expansion device is just pulled out. It's a very thin, very flexible device made of polyimide plastic material it's very thin thickness is just 0 0.07 millimeter and it comes out through the side port very easily it comes out through one millimeter side port very easily and now I'm going to remove all the visco Visco must be removed very nicely because otherwise there can be visco induced raised intraocular pressure which is very much uncomfortable for the patient. Once the intraocular pressure goes up, there is corneal edema, steamy corneal edema, there is pain and patient is not happy. So we must devote some quality time to remove the visco. In this case the irrigation was through the main incision and when the irrigation is through the main incision lift the anterior lip of the main wound so that leakage becomes very minimal. And now the side port is being hydrated. The main wound has been constructed in such a way that it doesn't need any hydration and then this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber we have some post-op pictures so please watch till the end of this video the anterior chamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded and this is, these are the post-op pictures see how beautiful is the cornea cornea is clear all around and this is first post of day picture antichamer is quiet intraocular pressure is 14 millimeter of mercury and this is the optic nerve hit by 90 adapter and this is the macula so this is a very satisfactory result on the first post-operative day thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love respect empathy and great surgical competence